Okay, so get this. Imagine living in a city that's built for, you know, actual people, not just cars. A city with green spaces everywhere, affordable homes. Everything's walkable. That's the whole idea behind those... Um, those sustainable city villages. Oh, yeah. And today we're diving deep into, well, it's a pretty bold proposal that wants to make that happen. Yeah, it's a hot topic for sure. For real. With all those projections saying cities are going to add another, what is it, like 3 billion people? Oh, yeah, by like 2050, I yeah, think. Yeah, 2050. That's a huge strain on, well, everything. Housing, resources, the environment. Definitely a global challenge. Totally. And you know what? This proposal wants to tackle it head on, but get this. They want to use aluminum. Interesting. Right. We've got all these reports, blueprints, even economic projections, and it's all about aluminum. Wow. That's that's something. Yeah. Using prefabricated aluminum structures to build these like sustainable communities. And the scale of that, it. Oh, right. They're aiming for huge numbers. Unbelievable. This two-phase plan to like set up these plants near major cities. To make the aluminum homes. Yeah. With the goal of churning out like 60,000 homes a year. 60,000? thousand homes you're kidding i know it's a lot that's incredible mm. but why aluminum i mean it's not the first thing you think of for like building a home i know right yeah usually it's a uh, wood concrete or steel even but aluminum has some serious perks okay like what it's super lightweight but also really strong so you can build faster more efficiently and get this it can handle earthquakes really well really oh yeah it meets like the toughest earthquake resistance standards. Oh, wow. Which is huge in high risk areas. Mm. Plus, it's 100% recyclable. Okay. Yeah, it's a big one. So it fits perfectly into that whole circular economy thing. Gotcha. So we're not talking about like flimsy aluminum shacks here. No, no, no. Not at all. Okay, good. These are meant to be durable, safe, eco friendly. So, how does it actually work? What do these aluminum homes even look like? So, they're using this system. It's called MHS Modular Housing Systems. Okay, MHS, got it. They use this lightweight aluminum frame as the base, mm -hmm. and then they use these things called SRPs for the walls and roof. A site? Yeah, structural insulated panels. Oh, okay. They're like these panels with insulation sandwiched between two boards. So the SIPs provide insulation and like make the structure strong. Yeah, exactly. Smart. What else is good about using them? Well, you can build them off-site, yeah. like in a factory, not out in the open. So it's much faster. Oh, uh, so like prefab, basically. Exactly. Prefabricated. And they're super energy efficient. Nice. So lower energy bills for the people living there? Yep. Exactly. Any other perks to going this IP route? Oh, yeah. Tons. They're super adaptable. Really? The proposal talks about MHS's, uh, quote-unquote, modular flexibility. So, like, you could make your house bigger. Oh, interesting. Like add a bedroom as your yeah. family grows. Oh, cool. Or detach a part and like use it for something else. That's so cool. It's like adult Legos. It's pretty innovative for housing, that's for sure. And actually, the MHS system got like an award, the A Design Award. Really? Yeah, for like being unique and all that. Yeah. Specifically for their um, interlocking technology, which makes putting the houses together super easy. So it's not just some like far out concept. They've actually got awards and the tech to back it up. Exactly. They're legit. That's awesome. And and they've even thought about the economic side of things. Oh, yeah. They're all over it. Right. Each village is supposed to create like over 5,000 jobs locally. 5,000. That's wild. So it's not just about, you know, sustainable houses. It's about sustainable communities and jobs. Exactly. It's the whole package. That's fantastic. But how do they plan to actually pull this off? It's Thousands of homes, multiple cities. Right. So they break it down into two phases. Okay. Makes sense. Phase one's all about setting up a main manufacturing plant to make the aluminum parts. Okay. And then they're going to build 20, uh, what do they call it, fabrication facilities. Oh, near major cities? Yeah, exactly. Those are for putting the prefab units together, right? Yeah. Basically like giant assembly lines for houses. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. This way they can adapt the designs for different places and weather. Right. A house in like... Arizona wouldn't work in Alaska. Exactly. You but then there's the aluminum supply. Oh, yeah. Is that a problem? Well, that's where phase two comes in. Okay. They want to build a whole plant just for making aluminum. Wow. To make sure they've got enough, you know. Smart. Plus, they're adding 20 more factories. It's like vertical integration or something. So they're not just building houses. They're building a whole system to support it. Right. The whole thing from the ground up. Wow. Okay. So they've got the concept, the tech, the plans. They've built affordable earthquake proof homes using this MHS system. Oh, cool. What can we learn from that project? Were there like problems they had to solve? Well, the biggest takeaway is how fast they built them. 
way faster than the traditional way. Yeah, that's huge, especially when people need homes quickly. Totally. What materials did they actually use for this project? So for the frame, they used an aluminum alloy. Okay. And then fire-resistant SIPs for the walls and roof with magnesium and EPS insulation, I think. You went all out with the SPs. And double glazed windows for, you know, energy efficiency and all that. Wow, so they thought of everything. Speed, affordability, safety, and like the energy stuff. Yeah, they were thorough. That's impressive. And I guess it really proves the earthquake resistance thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. The MHS system's been tested a lot, mm -hmm. and it can withstand a lot of shaking. So it's not just building a house. It's about peace of mind. For sure. Knowing right. your house isn't going to fall down in an earthquake, that's huge. Totally. And they did all this while still being super sustainable. Aluminum's infinitely recyclable, remember? Right, right. So these homes can be taken apart and reused. Exactly. So we're talking about less waste less using up resources. Yep, it's like that whole circular economy model. Cool. Okay, so we've got faster building, affordability, earthquake proof, super sustainable, but this is all about building communities, not just houses, right? So what's the bigger picture here? Well, the goal with these sustainable city villages is to like, you know, build communities that are good for the environment and good for people. So it's not just about the houses themselves, it's about the whole living experience. Yeah, exactly. How do they do that? They focus on things like really good public transportation and making everything walkable so people don't need cars as much. So instead of these huge suburbs that depend on cars, it's more like a uh, compact, wallable community. Right, exactly. That's cool. And I bet that has all sorts of benefits for like air quality, health, even just people getting to know each other. Oh, yeah, totally. It's like rethinking how we design cities. Yeah, it's a pretty big idea. It is a big vision, yeah. yeah. But it has a lot of potential. Yeah, for sure. It's given me a lot to think about. But I wonder, beyond housing, what else could this technology be used for? We've talked about schools and offices, but could it go even bigger? Like, could you build whole city districts using this? That's an interesting question, and it's actually something we'll be talking about more in the next part. Okay, great. We'll really get into, like, how prefabricated construction could change, not just buildings, but entire cityscapes. All right, listeners, stay tuned. We'll be back after a short break to dive into those bigger picture ideas. You know, one of the things that really stands out to me in this proposal is how it, like, challenges the way we think about building cities. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. We're so used to those, like, sprawling concrete jungles. Exactly. But this, like, sustainable city village thing, it feels so different. It is. It's a breath of fresh air, you know? Yeah, it's all about designing for people, not just cars. Yeah. And focusing on making things walkable, having good public transport, green spaces, you know. Yeah, totally. We talked a bit about the transportation stuff before the break. Right. But I want to, like, really dig into that. How do these villages actually make public transport, like, the best option? Okay, so imagine this. You arrive at the village, uh -huh. not by car, but by train or bus. Gotcha. And the transit hub isn't just some random spot. It's the heart of the whole community. So from there, you can walk everywhere you need to go. To like the shops, schools, you work. Know, parks, your home, everything's right there. So it's not just like having buses and trains. It's about making them the obvious choice. Exactly. And then they have those, you know, bike lanes, walking paths even areas where cars aren't allowed. So they're basically flipping the traditional city model on its head. Yeah, exactly. Making people and bikes the priority. Totally. That's awesome. And I bet it makes the whole community healthier. Yeah. yeah. Like kids can walk to school, families can hang out in the parks, people are just like more active. Yeah. But okay, let's switch gears for a sec. Okay. And talk about the environmental side of things. Yeah. We know aluminum is recyclable. But what about the whole, like, life cycle of these homes? Like, are we just moving the environmental problem somewhere else? That's a good question. And it's something they address in the proposal. Okay, good. They're all about, like, minimizing the impacts throughout the whole process. Yeah. Starting with using recycled aluminum as much as possible. Right. And aluminum can be recycled, like, forever, That's right? Right now, yeah. Without losing quality. Exactly. So the aluminum in these homes could last for, I don't know, decades. Maybe even longer. That's wild. So they could, like, take down a building and use the aluminum for a new one? That's the idea, yeah. Wow, that's a real circular economy. Yeah. What about the other parts of the houses, though? Like, the SIPs. What happens to them when the house is, like, done? Well, remember how we were talking about the modular design? Yeah. 
That makes it really easy to take the houses apart. Oh, right. So they can separate the SIPs and recycle them or sometimes even reuse them for other stuff. So it's not just about like making less trash. Right. It's about using things for as long as possible. Exactly. And that's not all. The proposal also talks about using, you know, renewable energy. Like solar panels and stuff. Yeah. Solar panels, geothermal heating, all that to make the villages even more eco-friendly. So they're thinking about the whole picture, energy, materials, everything. Exactly. They're trying to create a community that works with the environment, not against it. That's really cool. Okay, we've covered the environment, the transportation stuff. Now let's talk about the people. How would living in one of these villages actually change people's lives? Well, imagine a place where everyone has access to a good, affordable home, yeah. no matter how much money they make. And there are green spaces, community gardens, places where people can come together. It sounds like a real community, you know? Yeah, a real sense of belonging. Not just like living in a house. Right. And they also design in shared spaces like community centers, libraries, even places to work together. Oh, wow. That's cool. To encourage people to connect and build relationships. So they're not just giving people homes. They're giving them a whole, like, social network. Yeah. And by making everything walkable and easy to get around, it becomes a much safer and more inclusive place. It sounds pretty idyllic, honestly. But are there, like, any downsides, any challenges they haven't thought about? This all seems pretty expensive. Yeah, the upfront costs can be higher. For the prefab stuff. Yeah, but you have to look at the bigger picture. Okay. They save you money in the long run, you know. Oh, right. Less energy use, less yeah. maintenance, the houses last longer. It all adds up. So it's about, like, changing how we think about spending. Exactly. It's not just looking at the initial price tag. Right. Plus, there are ways to, like, help with those upfront costs. Yeah. Green bonds, public-private partnerships, stuff like that. It sounds like we need to find ways to make investing in sustainable building more attractive. Yeah, to show people the long-term benefits. Right. But what about the rules and regulations like zoning and building codes? Don't those make it harder to do these kinds of projects? Yeah, that's a big hurdle. Especially when you're talking about like whole districts. Definitely. A lot of the current rules are outdated. They don't really work for prefab. We're talking about like bureaucratic red tape that slows everything down. Yeah, unfortunately. So we need to raise awareness and like get policymakers on board. Exactly. We need them to update the rules to support these new ways of building. It's a reminder that like technology isn't the only solution. Right. We need the right policies too. Totally. And another challenge is making sure these villages are actually inclusive, that everyone benefits, not just a few people. Oh, yeah, that's important. Some people might say that this focus on prefab ignores all the existing housing in cities. That's a valid point, and it's something we need to be careful about. But like, what about all the people who are already struggling to afford housing? Exactly. We can't just build new stuff and forget about them. Right. So it's important to, like, integrate these new developments into the existing city. Okay. Think about different housing options, not just prefab, like renovating old buildings, things like that. So it's about making the whole city more sustainable. Exactly. Not just building isolated villages. And that means talking to the people who live there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Getting their input. Making sure the projects actually meet their needs. Not just like imposing some top-down plan. Exactly. It should be a collaboration between everyone involved. Now, before we move on, I have one more question. We've been talking a lot about housing. Right. But could this prefab approach be used for, like, other things? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've mentioned schools and offices. Yeah. But could you go even bigger? Like, could you build a whole city district this way? That's a really interesting question, and it's actually a perfect segue into our next segment. Okay, awesome. Where we'll talk about how prefab could change not just individual buildings, but entire urban landscapes. All right. So we've been talking about these sustainable city villages, you know, with, with the aluminum homes and the whole focus on making cities better for people. Yeah, definitely. But now I'm wondering, like, can we take this even further? Can we use this prefab approach to build, I don't know, like whole city districts? Oh, absolutely. That's where it gets really interesting. OK, okay cool. We've yeah. talked about individual houses and, you know, those self-contained villages, but it can go way beyond that. So not just like little pockets of sustainability, but transforming whole parts of the city. Exactly. Think about how fast and flexible prefab construction is. Right. You could completely revamp a whole district way faster than with traditional buildings. Oh, wow. Like, imagine replacing all those old rundown buildings with these new, efficient, modular ones. Yeah. It would be like a chain reaction of positive change. It would be amazing, like, 
hitting fast forward on urban renewal, but wouldn't everything end up looking the same? Like, wouldn't it all be too uniform? That's a common concern, but it's not really an issue with modular design. Oh, okay. You can customize things a lot. Really? You can use different materials for the outside, different layouts. You can even arrange the modules in different ways. Oh, I see. So you can create a streetscape that's still diverse and interesting to look at. So you could have a whole row of townhouses, and they all look different, but they're all built using the same sustainable prefab system. Exactly. And think about the possibilities for urban planning. Yeah. You could have mixed use developments okay. where you have homes, businesses, even light industry all in the same area. That would be so cool. It's all about breaking down those old barriers and creating these really integrated multifunctional communities. I love that idea. And this would be especially helpful in places where cities are growing really fast or where there just aren't enough homes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can well, build whole new neighborhoods so much faster. Exactly. It's like having a rapid response team for sustainable city building. OK, but what about the challenges of going that big? I mean, we talked about the rules and regulations, the financing. Right. Wouldn't those problems be even bigger when you're dealing with, like, entire districts? Of course, things get more complex as you scale up. But I think we can overcome those challenges. In fact, I think tackling them could lead to some really positive changes in the whole construction industry. So it's not just about building houses. It's about building a better way to build. Exactly. Imagine if we had building codes that actually encouraged prefab construction. Yeah. If we had standardized modular components, a really strong supply chain for recycled materials. Wow. That would be incredible. It would be like a whole new ecosystem for sustainable building. Where everything just works together Perfectly. Right. And who knows what kind of innovations that could lead to. Maybe we could develop entirely new building materials that are even more sustainable and adaptable. Yeah. Or we could use things like smart sensors and energy management systems to make our buildings and districts even more efficient. It's like taking all the best ideas from sustainable design and pushing them even further. Exactly. And as more and more people move into cities, we have to find ways to make those cities more sustainable, more resilient and just better places to live. It's not really optional anymore, is it? Not really, no. So it's clear that these sustainable city villages are just the beginning. The really exciting stuff is when we start applying these ideas on a much larger scale. Not just changing individual buildings, but transforming whole urban landscapes. It's a big vision, and it requires us to really rethink things, wow. to embrace new ideas, and to work together. Across different industries and communities. Yeah, but the potential is huge. We could create cities that are not just functional, but also vibrant, equitable, and truly connected to nature. This whole deep dive has been so eye-opening, honestly. It's really changed how I think about what's possible for the future of our cities. I'm glad to hear that. I bet our listeners are feeling the same way. I hope so. And I really encourage everyone to keep learning about these ideas, to ask questions, to challenge the status quo, and to get involved in shaping the future of our cities. Because in the end, the cities of tomorrow will be built by the choices we make today. If we choose innovation, sustainability, and a real commitment to building strong communities, we can create cities that are not just places to live, but places to thrive. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into sustainable city villages and prefabricated construction. We hope you've enjoyed it and that you're leaving with a sense of hope and excitement for what the future holds for our cities.